Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got the spooky eyed light up card for you as part of the 31 days of Halloween spooktacular video hop. There are 31 days this month, 31 different videos, and if you comment along the way on each video in the hop, you'll be entered for your chance to win one big prize at the end of the month. I've got a link down below to the main list and every day on that blog post she'll be updating it with the new video. Uh, just so you know, today is October 8th that I'm posting this video. So you've got seven videos behind me and a few more come in the rest of the month. So make sure you hop along with us, okay? And, and good luck on winning. I'm gonna show you how I made this card. I promise you this is a very quick and easy card to make. I'm gonna show you the, the bits and pieces first here. When I do a die cut card like this, I like to pull out my magnetic sheet here. This is cut down to an A2 size card front just so that I can get a sense of the spacing. And I'll grab the dies that I'm using and I'll kind of lay them out on there. The first three sets that I'm using are all Tim Holtz dies. There's those spooky eyes. I've got the funky festive uh, floral pieces and then the large funky florals. I'll have links to all of those down on my blog as well. And then I've grabbed this Lawn Fawn grass border here. I'm gonna just give myself a ground on this card. And then because it's a light up card, I want to stamp push here down at the bottom underneath the button. And that lets the recipient know that it's an interactive card and that they push the button to get the lights to work. Uh, that's a, again, another lawn fun set there. Now, remember I said this is a quick and easy card. It's easy, but it does have three lights. Uh, so what we're gonna use is the easy light. This is actually a, a brand new product my husband and I made. And it's got three lights hardwired onto a little battery pack with a switch there. And it's very simple to use. You just tape the lights down where you want them and then tape the battery pack down. Now behind the cutout eyes, I wanna put a little piece of vellum. So I've got a strip of vellum there. My card base is gray, it's A2 sized. And then I've got a card front there. That's what I'm gonna build the scene on. And then I have another piece of black card stock as well that I will die cut all the floral pieces from. So let me show you how I put this card together. The first thing that I'm gonna do is grab that extra piece of black card stock. Notice that this piece has texture on one side, the back is smooth, and because I'm gonna stamp push here on the grass, I wanna cut it from the smooth side. I also decided that I wanna go ahead and cut all of my floral pieces from the smooth side, and I'll cut the eyes out from that background piece, the other piece, on the textured side. So that way we have a little more contrast between the, the floral pieces and the background because it's gonna be black on black. A, a little contrast of texture will give you more definition on the finished piece. And so I've just gone ahead and started cutting out those pieces. When I laid my grass piece down, I did give myself enough room to stamp the words push here underneath that so that it won't get cut off. And for that branch, I've cut one out from the smooth side and I want another piece that is reversed. So basically the mirror image. So I flip my paper over and then I cut it out from the textured side. I'm gonna use the smooth side up, but this way I'll have a mirrored image. And if you've die cut pieces before, you know that that gives you sort of a beveled edge on, on the side that you cut from. I have a little trick to show you so that you can kind of smooth it out a little bit and and fix it so they look pretty similar. So once I've cut the branches and the grass, I'm just gonna lay out my other little floral pieces here and I'll uh, die cut as many pieces as possible from that sheet of black paper. Some of them are even partial cuts, which is fine because those can be fillers around the edges. And it doesn't matter what floral pieces you use, if you're cutting them all from the black paper, it'll end up looking like a spooky scene. Here's that trick that I wanted to show you for the beveled edge. Uh, so with the, the smooth side facing up, I'm just gonna grab a bone folder and gently rub the edges down. That, it sort of flattens out the edges a bit more and curls them uh, back down a little bit if they were sticking up. And it just makes it all go together a little bit better. Now before we go too much further, I wanna stamp uh, push here on my card. I opted not to put any other sentiment on the front. 
And I haven't decided if on the inside I'm going to stamp Happy Halloween or Boo, so I haven't actually finished the inside of the card yet. But I didn't want a sentiment on the front, I just wanted the spooky eyes. So the only stamping I'm doing on this card is the word push, or the words push here down at the bottom on the grass. I'm going to go ahead and line it up in my Misty. I'll treat the paper with an anti-static powder tool. Then I inked it up with Versamark ink. And I'm going to opt to put clear embossing powder on the words. You could use colored embossing powder. You could use um, any color that you want, a metallic or a sparkle. But I wanted the end result to be very subtle here. You can see it just fine in person, um, but it doesn't take over and it doesn't become an overwhelming element on the card. It, it's just settled down in the corner there. But it's also bold enough that you will see it when you see it in person and, and you know that you can read it and actually use it. So the next thing that I want to do is grab the card front. I do have the textured side up and I'm going to go ahead and start layering some of my floral pieces down just so that I can line them up and figure out where I want to cut the eyes out. I'm grabbing those there and I'll move them around and kind of play with the different floral pieces just to to get the placement right. You can't you can't cut them from the wrong place. <laughs> so go ahead and make sure you you spend a minute figuring out exactly where you want them before you actually do cut them out. Um, worst case scenario you could cut a new piece of uh, black cardstock to be a new card front if you cut them out wrong, but I think it's worth it to to spend a minute and figure out the placement. After I run those through uh, my big shot there, I've got the eyes cut out. And then I want to grab my vellum piece and I'm going to go ahead and kind of mark it with a pencil and cut out a little panel to go behind each set of eyes. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm eyeballing it, I cut it wrong and I want to make sure to leave myself enough of a gap around the edges so that I can glue the vellum down and you won't see any of the glue seeping out. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab some Copic markers and just color up that vellum. I've had a lot of people ask me if you can color the lights themselves with alcohol markers. The answer is yes, but you won't always get the color that you're looking for. Uh, if you want a bold, bright color, you're going to be better off coloring vellum and having the light shine behind that. Some colors work better than others. You can always go ahead and experiment. You can color right on those lights. And then if you don't like the way it looks, clean it up with some rubbing alcohol. It won't hurt the lights at all. So once I've got the, the vellum colored with those Copic markers, to enough depth that I like them there. I did want to add a little more shine, so I put down a drop of liquid pixie dust and I'm just brushing it on with a paintbrush. It doesn't react with the Copics, so you can go from red to green and, and you don't have to clean the brush in between, but it really gives them a lot of shine and sparkle there. So the next thing to do is just go ahead and glue those down. I'm using PVA glue in a fine line bottle it took me a second to realize that I probably wanted to use my tweezers to handle this <laughs> just a little bit easier. And also it's a good idea to stick some glue behind the back of the face there just to, to really grab the vellum on the inside as much as possible. Once I've got that glued down, I can go ahead and start sticking the floral pieces onto the card front. So I'll pull those out of die cut jail there and start laying them out. It's really handy to have a dish next to you for small pieces like this. Um, also for fussy cut stamped images, just so you don't lose any of them. And you can see I'm working on a black mat. If I had tiny pieces of black paper on there, that would, it would get lost very easily. All of my die cut pieces are just kind of getting glued in place. That that PVA glue that's in the fine line bottle dries clear and matte, so if any seeps out, it's no problem. And then I can trim off the edges with some scissors. Get that all cleaned up. And then now we're ready to go ahead and stick the lights down to our card base. So what I want to do, and honestly I wish I would have thought of this before I put the vellum in place, is I want to kind of mark a dot between the eyes 
if I hadn't glued the, the vellum down, I could sort of trace around the eyes a little bit and then know exactly where to put the, the light. Um, but it's, it's not hard to do it this way either. You just kind of line it up, hold your pencil in place, slide the top out of the way, and then you've got a pencil mark there. Um, for the easy light, we're going to need some scotch tape and some double stick stronger tape. This is super tape. Uh, you can use regular glue as well. Uh, you would not want to use just your little Tombow tape runner. That The glue is not usually strong enough for that, the ATG either. The battery pack is a little bit heavy, so you want to use something a little stronger like this super tape. Now I also marked a place, uh, marked the spot with the pencil for the switch, but I wasn't 100% certain that I got it in the right place, so I just want to kind of scotch tape it down and test it. And I I did, I like the placement. So I can trace it with my pencil. I just traced sort of the outline of the battery pack there. That way I can remove the release paper and stick it back down and know that it's in the right spot. And then those lights just need to get taped down. It's quick and easy. The yellow dot at the end of each set of wires is the light. You want the yellow dot facing up for this card. And it's quick, it's, it's very simple. You could also use a wet glue for this as well, but then you have to hold it and wait for that to dry. So I like scotch tape or washi tape. If you're like me, you have 300 rolls of washi tape and hardly ever use it. So this is a, a perfect project if you'd like. Once I get the lights and the battery pack exactly where I want them. I can go ahead and clean up the rest of those wires. We don't want them sticking out of the top. So I'll just go ahead and kind of curl them over and tape them down flat. You want to be careful not to, to bend the wires too sharply because it, it, if you fold them in half in a real sharp curve, um, you can actually break the wires. So I'm just kind of curl them, curling them on themselves in a softer, gentle curve. And then just kind of smash them down and cover them up with more tape. And that's it. See how easy that is? Now we do need to pop the back up a little bit with some foam tape. I'm going to use a double layer of foam tape. That is the thickness of the battery pack there. And also, having a little bit of depth between the eyes, between the vellum in the eyes and the light itself, gives you more room for the light to kind of bounce around a little bit and reflect through more of the opening in the eyes. If you had it just straight on top of the light, you'd have a pinpoint of light rather than a diffusion of light coming through the whole little window there. So I just kind of pop the whole thing up on a double layer of foam tape. I did find that it was easier to put some of the foam tape on the black piece and some of it on the card, just so that I was sure I didn't cover up the eyes or the battery pack with foam. And then that's pretty much it. The very last thing I'm gonna do is sign the back of my card. And I don't usually put this in my video, but I've had several people lately tell me that they don't usually sign the back of their cards. And I think that's a shame. I just wanna let you know that I do. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but you spend a lot of time making a handmade card. I think it's a nice touch to sign it at the end and let the person know that, that you made it. So I threw that in here this one time. Also because this video is pretty darn short for me <laughs> because we're using the easy light. It is super simple. So that finishes up my card. I hope that you like it. And don't forget that this video is part of the 31 Days of Halloween Spooktacular video hop. I do have a link down below which will take you to the blog post. You can see the previous uh, videos in the hop. And then each day it'll be updated with the new video. So comment on every video as we go along. Then you'll be entered for one big prize at the end of the month. Also, if you like today's video, give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more videos like this, I've got some interactive cards here that you can click on. And uh, don't be afraid to click subscribe. As always, my friend, thanks for watching.